from this week forward, we're gonna have a course giveaway on this channel, which is shamelessly stolen by just me. Well, to enter this giveaway, you only have to respond to course the question of the day. And of course, the winner will be revealed on Friday. So the more question of the day you respond to throughout this week, the higher chance to have to win, of course, this comma O shiny version giveaway, which is a sexy EV level 100 the EV spread as you see on the screen to get it with of course choice pick which will be included with the Pokemon itself so of course all that said enjoy this video what's up guys and of course welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with just for the course this and today we're going up against under the radar or Kelly so before I even go into the battle itself, make sure to check out Kelly's channel, which of course will be linked down below. He's a very very charismatic Wi-Fi battler, together with of course our series on his channel which is called League Viability Rankings. Uh, a very very fun series in general, a lot of information, it's very very prominent, go very very going through a lot of differentials with the Pokemon themselves, so I definitely encourage you guys to check that series out if anything. So going into this game, we actually had a bit of a dialogue that either we go, you know, full meme team or we go with something more viable. And he was all for, you know, go with a board, more of the unviable Pokemon. So as you see on my <laughs> on my side of the field here we got a Lowland Bandit Executor, Power Herb Drift Loom, uh, C Move Meditate Electros, Scope Lands Ariados, Bandit Technician Persian and Specs um, Toe Cannon. So, <laughs> straight on that, it's, it's not the most viable kind of a combination here. And my opponent here is actually bringing in a bit of a tougher team, but definitely not impossible to deal with, with Togemaru, Starmie, Sudowoodo, uh, Decidueye Como, and Mega Sharpedo. So, straight on that, I it's kind of suggested that it's very likely that he will lead off with Sudowoodo, which means that my Alolan Executor might be my best overall lead. But that was just a speculation at the time, and it could lead off with, you know, whatever, even Toga tomorrow makes sense. So, we're really, with all this said, I'm just hoping for the best, because this is still a tough team to be dealing with, with, with my team in mind. So anyway, let's go. So, right, from the next one, I was, of course, going to start with Egidarsil, my executor, as my opponent leads off with, of course, Toga tomorrow or Steel Shoe. And, yeah, I do decide to stay in here. I'm actually going to go for the Dragon Hammer. The reason for this is because here is he doesn't have necessarily a way of attacking me outside of the U-turns because the only move with super protective damage. So knowing that, I'm just gonna stay and it's very likely he will switch out. Even though I carry uh, Earthquake, there's just such a big risk for me of doing so. And actually that U-turn does so much damage. There's definitely like a 2 hit kill area. Uh, as he brings in Oliver, and which of course is Decidueye, as the Dragon Hammer will do a mighty amount of damage. Uh, and the thing is here, I'm not necessarily scared that he will knock me out, even if he does, I still get a free switch in, which is kind of what I want. So as I keep on just going at it, see that he will switch out, probably related to me to switch out really, but that's my best guess. So he's gonna bring in Jewel, which is just will take a mighty amount of damage too. But here's the thing, I do fear Starmie, because with the leftovers, this is not a 2-hit kill. And the other side of this event is that even if I do enough damage, he could pack Ice Beam, and Ice Beam will definitely kill this Palm Tree. So knowing that, I'll just switch out to the biggest worth, uh, which of course is the, <laughs> the Bandit Persian with Bite to the Technician. He'll actually go for a Psychic here, which is very lucky for me, considering that he might as well have gone for a Skull there, predicting the switch out. Clearly didn't do that, and I was very, very lucky for me, really, as uh, I was feeling that it's very likely he would switch out. So, I went for a U-turn. I do have play rough, so I felt it was a little tough. I didn't go for that play, but I really was predicting Togi tomorrow. So, um, Kamo comes in here, then there is really no switching that I really got here. My best bet is to hope that my Brom Bum, or of course my Specs Boom Burst Tone Cannon, can do enough damage to survive a hit from it. Now, he is a special one and go for Clanging Scales. Luckily, I do survive it, even though I barely live that one, and I don't necessarily know the role of that, but I get, of course, the action to, of course, turn this about, as I will retaliate with the Boombers, and with a crit in mind, we will knock out this combo, so, hey, <laughs> it works! <laughs> so that was, that was really unfortunate for my opponent, I'm not really gonna deny that fact. So anyway, soon when comes in, I was really feeling that he could go for a Sucker Punch or Self Rocks, either way, my um, Brom Bum is kinda dead, so I just gotta keep going for Boomburst, as he actually goes for Rock Polish. 
So this was kind of tough because that meant that I don't necessarily think I had anything on my team that could outspeed uh, after Rock Polish. While it's not the fastest Pokémon itself, it still is speedier with Ghost Rock Polish in mind. So during the battle, I basically had to calc how fast this was, and it's not faster than Persian, which is great because that means I'm sending Persian against this guy and just wrap things up. I was, like I said, fearing the sucker punch. Uh, and him not having it was really good because that meant that I could just optimize myself and get a mighty amount of damage which basically secured that this is going to be a KO due to the condition boost of, of course Bite. It should be noted Persian does not have a good attack set, I do believe it's just around 60 base so the extra ignition plus bandit power here really is the one that kind of helps it out here and so here comes Togedemaru and I don't necessarily have a switch in here, I'm just going to keep going for a Bite and I was so surprised it is over 70% and it does get a flinch here, which is super unfortunate for my opponent because that means a person is showing him who, of course, the, on the food ladder, which Pokemon is where, and the person clearly is stronger than the Token Moro. Here comes Sharpedo though, and here I was kind of feeling that, you know, this is probably a wrap. I don't necessarily know if I have any Pokemon I can take on a Mega Sharpedo. I was really hoping that this was not the Mega form of running some Lifer variants or anything like that. Uh, and we do see Protect here, definitely trying to protect himself for the bite, and of course, avoiding any kind of possible damage output. Or, of course, if I play rough anything like that or U turn. So he goes for another Protect, and makes sense. He makes sure he actually outspeeds any possible Scarfer if I have some kind of weird speeds here, which I do not. So anyway, my Eggdor seal is basically for the sacking here, there's really nothing I can do to kind of avoid the situation. So I'm gonna bank pretty much all on actually my Persian to be able to take a hit and retaliate, but even at that, play rough is not a 2 it or a 1 it KO. So I need to go for a U-turn, I really need to get some optimized damage and then hope something else can hurt him. As, but at this point I felt that this might actually be a wrap, if my opponents have won this game, there is only so many more things I can do, and I'm being completely honest here, because everything on my team is somewhat weak to that crunch, and this is the only one I can take. As it goes for Warfall, I'm banking him not getting a flinch. Luckily, it doesn't do that as I go for a U turn. But as I stated here, sadly, it is not even close to uh, even a KO here. Player of, like I said, would not be that either. So, anyway, Millionaire, my Electivire, was my only Pokemon I had that had the best defense and overall HP. He was the only one I had who can take a crunch here, and he cannot take a crunch. So he's just gonna get one hit KO'd. So I'm gonna send the Ariados basically like hoping for the best. Uh, and uh, I am very, very, very lucky here because my opponent Kelly here thought I was a Focus Sash variant and goes for Waterfall, hoping for a flinch. As he doesn't get the flinch, and I get retaliated with a Cross Poison. And that is awesome. I am a Sniper variant with Scope Lens, which. You know, I really want to set up agility, but with that in mind, that was not going to work. It just was no way in hell that's going to work. So, getting Sharpedo out of the way was basically a wrap here, because there is nothing he's this is Joe I can do to my Ariados, and I do outspeed it, show me that he's a more defensive set, and I do score the crit there. So, Scope Lens coming through, even though it's kind of worst kind of scenario. So, his last Pokemon is the Jewel, and there is nothing this Jewel can do against my Persian, hell, even against, of course, my... Uh, Drift Blim, which I will showcase here instead. I could wrap up, of course, Persian's bite because I kind of felt that it seems worthy since, of course, Persian was definitely the MVP of this game. Even though I will say that the Tokana's Boom Burst was super, super cool. But I really want to showcase Blimper here. So here we go. Power Herb, uh, Unburden, Fan, of course, is going to come through. As it goes for a Skull, it is not going to do a whole lot to us. He could have scored a Bird on me, definitely, but it's not going to help him in the long run. So here comes the Phantom Force, and it's of course a one hit KO because it's freaking Phantom Force. It's, that's a powerful hit, plus the Drift actually has a decent attack to it. So hey, it worked. So that's a wrap up, and you know, clearly a very, very lucky win on my side, really. So thank you so much, Kelly, for this game. So yeah, a quick rundown because definitely I do believe my opponent deserves that. I'm not gonna deny it. Had he gone for Crunch with his Oriados he would have won this game, like there is no way from that wrap up that I had any Pokemon I could have taken that hit. And uh, yeah, quite honestly, luck is such a big factor here. Um, I did have a lot of fun though, I definitely felt that, you know, the hacks in mind, you know, the flinch and, you know, the crit of course with Boom Burst probably helped me, you know, 
avoiding the massacre that could have been this matchup because Kelly is a very good trainer and he definitely took a step back to be a bit more fun and uh, it punished him definitely and the hacks definitely enforced that so uh, I do believe in a, in a more normal kind of environment Kelly is the better battler between us two uh, I definitely think in the meta he definitely are the smarter but in this particular game I got some momentum and it definitely showed and helped so with that said, um, thank you so much Kelly of course for actually having me for a battle and also for everybody who's been watching make sure to check this guy out because he's actually great definitely one of the good ones in the community so with that said guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then of course, take care. Bye.